right, folks, we are back. Welcome back. Welcome back. Um, I do what I am going to try and set up in the grand fashion of Amiga Bill. The famous Atari cam. So, for no other reason than I have a dealio right here. And I can go to remote shoot, live view shoot. There we go. Okay. And then I have one more window capture to the EOS. This is a very um, archaic way of shooting because all my equipment is very archaic. But we can just scoot that. Oh my gosh, it's perfect. Okay. And now. Zoom in on His Majesty. I like it's falling. What if we did this, huh? Watch this, get ready. And then a little bit of zoop, bam. It's like I'm typing and I'm right there. It's amazing or something. Okay, so now we are all set up play. Um, and we can pop out our chat. Okay, so hopefully I didn't lose too many people in that transition. Um, I do want to plug in my joystick. And I thought, hey Pix, I thought that uh, we could start out, this is just going to be, we're, we're not going to play from the book today. I do plan on continuing the journey of, um, and this is a little bit of a, uh, oh, it's because I've uh, looking at the wrong camera. It's a little bit of leftover uh, Thanksgiving wine. So that should keep me going. And because um, if you don't drink it, it goes bad, you know. Okay, so now we're ready. We got the Atari set up and check this out. The days of the stick for most of my streams are over. I'm controlling this bad boy with a Super Nintendo controller hooked up to this thing. And this thing's called a gimmick. I don't know what it's called. It's the ADAP SNES 2AC from rafnet-tech.com. Aaron got this, um, and uh, he was not using it, and I said, boy, I would like to use that because I do not like using a stick. And so um, that's what we're gonna be using. So now I've got my sweet, sweet SNES controller, one of the best controllers that's ever been created. And uh, we will I'll load up the loader here. And uh, I thought we might start with a uh, checking to see if there was. Oh, actually. Okay. Um, I did want to see 
All right, if I, uh, oh, I'm also not mic'd up. Oh man, five doors down from the kebab shop. I knew that Folds had something in mind. Okay, so I did want to see if the um, if the Atari 8-bit had a version of Paperboy. I am Hasifa. In fact, um, I bought a uh, Elgato HD 60s on Black Friday. So uh, with the express goal of streaming from the Switch. Um, would you guys be interested in, and uh, I've only got one game so far, I've only got Luigi's Mansion, but I'd be happy to stream some of that out and and uh, and, and have a chat. Paperboy. Maybe there was no Paperboy for the, uh, for the Atari 8-bit. Weird. Well, let's see what else we've got here in the peas. Uh, we've got Pit Stop. I think this is kind of a famous game. Number drivers. One. Three. Okay. Yeah, go with three. Rookie. Single. You've only got three Switch games per card. Hey, you and me, buddy. Yeah, Hasifa, if I had a long commute where I could take my hands off the wheel, uh, then I'd probably have quite the collection. Um, what do you guys think? Monaco, Le Mans, Kiyomi, Albi, Jarama, or St. Jovite? Le Mans? All right, you got it, Hasifa. I imagine that that sound is pretty loud in your ears, so I will turn that down. Okay. Oh yeah, Delmont, you gotta get going with the Atari 8-bit. It's such a sweet machine. Of course I am a little bit biased having grown up with one. Man, these guys won't leave me alone. How's the uh, volume, guys? Is the uh, is the engine noise too loud and or annoying? Because I can easily turn it down. Yeah, really. If you're just a game, if well, if you're a uh, if you're just a gamer. The XE is probably the one, the XE GS definitely is the one to get. But the keyboard on these XE models is just atrocious. They, if you actually want to use it as a real computer, the 800XL is the sweet spot. Or if you're one of the happy few to get one of the few manufactured 1200XLs, you're still better off with an 800XL. <laughs> Volume's good. Thank you. Thank you, Curtis. Yeah, so Curtis, basically what I'm going to be doing, well, this is just a general stream announcement for everybody. Um, is uh, I am going to be uh, streaming um, mostly on Saturday nights um, a different class of computer each week. So this week's the week for the 1200XL. Um, next week we might do the Coco. We might do the, the Speccy. Week after that, you know, I've got an Amstrad. Still have barely touched the G3 Mac and the G4 Mac that I got. So, um... So yeah, um, uh, that, that, that's that's basically good. that way. I'll make sure that I'm using all of my all of my systems, and we kind of do a round robin, and we get a good a good selection. All right, let's try pit stop two and see if see what the differences are. So the disadvantage of the um, my IDE two flash cart is that it requires a, um, a cold restart to, um, to switch games. If you hit reset, it just resets the game. 
I know that people have actually wired up like um, secondary switches on their Atari so they don't wear out the actual original power switch. Not quite that crazy, but people have done it. I don't know about that, Delmont. Um, yeah, the, unfortunately, it, it would just be way, way, way too many wires. Uh, that would be something that we might set up, you know, as a once a year sort of thing where we get everything out and have it all put together. Um, maybe in the summer where I'm off school. But because of the actual streaming situation here at my desk, uh, I really only have enough room and enough wires to uh, to uh, to have one system out at a time. But that was that's definitely something we could do on a um, on a special occasion because that that does sound awesome, Curtis. New joystick up, down, left, right to select options. Oh, Watkins Glen, that sounds good. Oh, you can enter your name. And I'm so, so happy to have a working keyboard. Yeah, definitely. We could definitely do that at the uh, at computer club. Um, now this is just a totally different game. Um, this is a lot more like pole position. Um, I don't know that I like this as much. It's it's like a pole position that, oh, did I? Maybe I picked two players accidentally by default. Let's let's just start it again. Oh, and sometimes you just have to do that. But yeah, I'm all about um, doing doing some comparisons for sure. It would be so much easier if all computers had the same power supply. Even that would make things so you could just attach the power supply, attach the AV cable, and you're you're good to go. Um, okay, let's try pit stop two again. Again. Now, do you have to do two-player? Is there no one-player option in Pit Stop? I'm going to make this chat bigger, so I don't know. I'm have to... There we go. Okay, maybe I just didn't set it up correctly. Let's look again. Number of players, one. Definitely want to go back to the Watkins Glen. It's not exactly uh, super responsive either. There we go. Okay. Yeah. I don't know what the deal is because it didn't prompt me to enter a name for the second player. Weird, huh? Yeah, well, we're not going to do this if that's that's the way it is. So we'll we'll wait for a second player. There. Okay. Since you're here, Curtis, let's go ahead and get it out of the way. Let's clear the air. Let's play a little Donkey Kong for the Atari Eight Bit. I heard you guys had a uh, had a uh, Coco Memories or a what? Well, I can't remember what Aaron called it, what segment of Coco Talk where you were talking about Donkey King this time. Now, Pix, I know that uh, Donkey Kong, your first exposure to Donkey Kong was um, on the on the Specky. You might not have seen the Atari 8-bit version before, so we'll have to... Coco Thoughts. Coco Thoughts. So, if you look at the title screen here, the Kong on the Atari 8-bit version actually looks a bit like the Kong in Donkey King. Of course, there's no opening animation. What you do get is the backgrounds. This game moves ultra fast. Um, much faster than the Coco or the, um, the arcade machine. Oh, my God. Yeah, and it's missing a girder. 
It was, uh, the, uh, the, uh, I think that the, the Nintendo version, the Coco version, maybe one of the later C64 versions had them all, but not the Atari 8-bit version. Kong's face just looks ridiculous. There is a hack of a new Donkey Kong um, for the Atari 8 bits where they actually change Kong to make him look like he does in the arcade. Um, and one of our most popular videos on the channel of all time was uh, my comparison. Now, can you jump the girders to clear them? You can. Okay. Should have grabbed the hammer there. That's my bad. Good, good eye there, Curtis. So, at the end of the day, I prefer the game that I'm better at. <laughs> That's what it all comes down to. I have no great love of Donkey Kong, as you know, because I find the original arcade version to be quite challenging. Um, and um, with this game, you know, I can make it to the end. Um, of course, this, this version also does not have the um, all the levels. Oh, that's interesting, Curtis. I will definitely check that out. I cannot tell you how excited I am for Aaron to uh, get the uh, get the composite mod installed for me. Um, once he does that, I'm going to be in a world of Coco glory. Hey, how much does one of those um, uh, um, CPU upgrades cost? The uh, replacement chip. Oh, awesome. Oh, boy. <laughs> that was my bad. Yeah, the 6309, right. How much does one of those run? I will tell you, I've, I've spent more on upgrading the Coco than I have any other computer in my arsenal. So, you can, uh, you can um, be proud of that. <laughs> okay, so that was Donkey Kong. Um, and I am open for um, suggestions. This is a totally free and clear, like whatever you guys want to see. If something pops in your head, let me know. Um, I guess we can check out Popeye. Although this is another game that I'm really horrible at. Doing all the P games, I guess. I have to hit start. Okay. And I'm already dead. Fantastic. So obviously the um, the graphical prowess of the Atari 8 bit uh, was well, not that this has nothing to do with the system, it's the, the programming. Nowhere close to Sailor Man, which is, is beautiful. In fact, I don't even believe that the, the sea hag appears in this. There are no empties. Oh yeah, she does. I thought the empties just came out of nowhere. Yeah, well like I was talking about on the uh, on the on the stream, on the marathon, the uh, it just seems like the screen is drawn so you don't have as much room to, to kill the foxes before they get to the bottom. Um it's just, it's not my favorite version of the game. Five ninety five. I can afford that. I can afford that all day long. Between getting the Coco set up and the new C64 interface, you know, I've never touched a C64, really. Um, I had one for a very brief amount of time in high school. I didn't do much with it, because it was really before I got the retro bug, aside from just nostalgia. I won't say that. That's really when the retro bug hit me for the first time. That's how I ended up with that machine. I had a Franklin Ace and a uh, and a C64 that uh, were possibly given to me, also possibly stolen out of my band room. I th I'm pretty sure my band director said, you can have these old computers, John. And I didn't just put them in my car one day. That's how I want to remember it, at least. 
All right, get over here, Bluto. Ooh, no. I'm horrible at Donkey Kong. I'm horrible at Donkey Kong. Yeah, that's right. All right, Picard, you got anything? Any requests? Curtis? Jumpman, great suggestion. Jumpman number one. I'm not sure. This this may be a crack. This may not be. This might not be a. Uh, this this might not be a legitimate release. We'll see. I have not seen the Flash Jazz Cat channel. Is he on Twitch or is he on YouTube, Delmort? Okay, yeah, this is Jumpman. Oh. I will check him out. What? How did I die there? Oh my gosh. I think I'm pushing the wrong button to jump, maybe. Oh. Man. Jumpman is very touchy in the controls department. Yeah. Like, if you climb to the top of the ladder, you're dead. You gotta get off the ladder. How does this stack up to the Coco version, um, Curtis? Pretty similar? Yeah, the way this game was listed, oops. It made me think that it was not an official release, but. I don't know. Hard to tell. Oh, man. This game gets brutal right away. Oh. Hey, uh, Hasifa, I saw the, uh, they had those on sale, um, on, for Black Friday. Um, is that, the, did you, were you, uh, did you, was, was your first serious smash on the GameCube? You didn't mess with the 64 one? I want to try Jumpman Jr. and see how that looks. I will check that out, Curtis. Oh, okay. Um, so, uh, you play the 3DS, and then, so how does the, uh, does the GameCube controller feel more like the 3DS, or not the GameCube, I'm sorry, the, yeah, the GameCube controller, does it feel more like a 3DS sort of thing? Let's see, Jumpman Jr. You know, what I'd really like to get, uh, Delamort, is a, some sort of a flash solution that just is completely compatible that will run everything and also has a built-in memory upgrade. Like, um, I don't know how that's possible, 
especially on the, the 1200 XL has such little expansion um, possibilities. But I'd love to just get something that would let me play everything. Look at this. Huh, that's interesting, Hasifa. Oh yeah. Man, I can't believe this is Jumpman's one speed and he's going he's going not so crazy fast. Maybe maybe I need to go maybe the higher the number the slower he runs, because this is just Oh. It's crazy. Oh. <laughs> well, this game will soon be over and we'll adjust the run speed. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I mean like you tap, you tap the stick and you go 400 miles. That's right, Barkbit. It's a speed, oh my gosh, the world's collapsing around me. This is like playing Fez. A pokey sound, baby. Okay, let's try this again. One player, player one speed, let's go with five. Okay, that's more like it. <laughs> In fact, five might be the perfect speed for Jumpman. Hey Curtis, what's the status of uh, various Coco World Records as far as score goes? Do you have a special section on your site where you keep sort of an unofficial uh, tally or anything, or is there is there another person that's that's keeping track of the Coco, you know, World Record scores? I guess you can take fall damage in this. Should have known. Are you talking about the 1200 XL could be expanded quite a bit? You know, I I, I wouldn't be opposed to. Well, really. Again, like the 1200XL has 64K, which should be enough to run any commercially released software for the Atari 8 bits. But because of something weird going on with this cart, it won't let me run like Mario Brothers off the cart. Um, I have to run it off the real cart. It's it's a tough. I'm sure it's a tough thing to keep up with. It's. It's a, it's a lot of work and no glory and only like, you know, people getting on to you for like not keeping it up. So I can understand why people haven't been chomping at the bit to keep that going. What have you been playing recently, Barkbit? You into the modern stuff? Yeah, it really has to be on the honor system. Um, I know on Atari Age, they've got, you know, weekly high score challenges that are just for fun. But yeah, anytime that you're doing anything uh, high score related, there's going to be people that are going to be cheating. What in the world? Yeah, man, PP Hammer's great. I'm not gonna lie to you. I'm gonna be playing a little bit of PP Hammer later on. Although I am a little bit scared to see how the uh, how the later levels stack up, because I'm afraid they might be get extra hard. Yeah, that's probably the way to do it, Curtis. Coco Fest is it always in Chicago? All right, that was Jumpman Jr. That's pretty cool. Interesting. But I will say it's one of the best games that we've done on Amigos, at least from first impressions. That was another game I was wanting to play.
So I, I believe that this is the original Mario, or I don't know, we'll see. I bet this is gonna give me an error, 64K required. Now this one's not even gonna work. Oh yeah, I, I played that on my last Atari stream. Um, it's uh, it's it's fantastic. I mean, the Atari version. There's only a couple games where the Atari version is the clear winner, and I would say both that and Ball Blazer are the clear winners. Like this Mario Brothers two thousand seven. I really want to check that out when I try and play it. I get nothing. I, I have not seen that, Delamore. I've not played Karunas Rift. Um, let's see if I've got that on, on here, Curtis. No Coronas Rift. Not a whole lot of K games at all. Look at this knockout. I'm always curious to look at boxing games. Okay. <laughs> this is always interesting. Joystick one, two. Huh. Okay. Well. Um. Touch gloves and go. Okay, so this is a two player, there's no AI built in. It might be only a score game too. There might not be any um, like physical knockouts. You know, boxing games were the Atari bo or the um, Activision boxing was a different take on it. But this was you know mostly boxing games were like this uh, up until Punch Out. Yeah, that's right, Curtis. Uh. This one's for saying that I'm not as smart as you. All right, so yeah, Knockout by Avalon Hill. All right, let's see what else we got on here. I wonder if they, if Activision did port boxing over to the, um, the 8 bits. Yeah, no kidding, Curtis. Possibly they should have stayed stayed there. Nope, no boxing. Although we do have Bounty Bob Strikes Back. I can't uh I can't pass that up. And again, this is one of these things too, where you have multiple versions of a game, and sometimes one will work, but some won't. Describe 3D bust out. What is that? Oh, James Bond, that's right. I'm sorry, Picard. I'll get right on it. 007, The Living Daylights. Uh, 
uncompressing. Pretty good. Oh, I see what you mean, Curtis. Yeah, I know what you mean. I don't know why I'm getting that stuttering. Each time it modulates up a key, the screen <laughs> the screen shifts. Oh. Oh. Yeah. I don't think this is how this is supposed to look. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no kidding, Picard. All right, well, like I said, I would love to have a flash cart that played everything perfectly. It would be fantastic. I, I, I want to say you're right, Curtis. Okay, James Bond 007. Let's try this one. This looks more like it. Oh yeah. Now this is different. <laughs> I don't remember this from Diamonds Are Forever. Now it has been a while since I've seen this. But I won't remember, like, James Bond on an interplanetary landscape um, in a sort of Moon Patrol-like setting. I don't think you can kill those things. Yeah. Really, you know, if I had unlimited time... I would go through this this card and I would take out all the non-working games. But the thing is, because of the text limitations on the um, on the flash card, you can't see the full names. So you're not sure which one is is the one that's not working because you're you're limited to a certain number of characters. All right. Well, I feel like I did pretty well, but I feel like I can do better. This is insane. Ooh. Oh my gosh. This has definitely got to be the oddest James Bond game that's ever been made. Um, the, uh, you know, that's a great question. I'm going to have to revisit it. I know it doesn't look like the, um, it doesn't look like the 2600 version. I must say the 2600 Defender, although I, I do recognize that it is in fact garbage, was one of the first video games I ever played in my life. And so it does, it holds a special place in my heart. So I, I can't, I can't destroy it. But it, of course, is totally different than the, uh. Oh. Pixels, this is James Bond. How can you not recognize this famous scene from the movie? <laughs> it's the one where the ship leaves behind diamond-shaped floating things, and then James Bond in his hover car has to destroy them while dodging the huge pits that the aliens left in the ground. This was a Pierce Brosnan one, I think. Yeah, I mean, when you consider that what, you know, any Atari, any Atari game is a technical marvel. When you consider that the hardware was written on, you know, that, that machine was written to play combat. And, you know, it's, uh, those guys were geniuses. And, I mean, that goes for all these early 8-bit microprogrammers. You know, they were making, they were doing the best they could with the hardware that they had. Oh, oh and a little bit of that. Oh, yes. Is this the whole game, I wonder? Oh. 
I only got a hundred more points that time than I got last time. Yep, that's I'm just making. Can I? Let's see what the. Uh, no, we're done. We're done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. So, let's look at Defender. Looking to see. Okay, it's Defensor. Might look at Defensor. Maybe that's a higher quality clone too. It came out in '95. Barkbit, I think you're onto something there, man. This already looks better than. Yeah. Yeah, this is pretty good. You've got the uh, fully populated radar. You know, you're not limited to a certain number of ships. I think I've never played this before on the 1200, or on the, on the Atari bed. Oops, that was not good. Um, not sure what hyperspace is, or your smart bomb, maybe spacebar. Your explosion is pr pretty, pretty good. Yeah, yeah, I'm I'm a fan of this. Defender is just the ultimate in like crazy crazy hard games. I don't know, it's sort of between this and um Robotron for just like quarter sucker immediate. Oh, nope, nope. Oh, I thought I could outrun it. Let's give that one more go. I haven't played Stargate, but I believe you. <laughs> because if it's like Defender, but with more buttons, then yes. <laughs> it, it would be the ultimate in uh, challenging. Oh my, look at that, look at that. There were 17 bullets headed straight for my face. That guy's flying below the, what? I was checking to see if the, the bullets killed, or the, the smart bombs killed bullets, but they don't. Yeah. It's Defender. It's very, very difficult. <laughs> Delamort, you're, hot, you're a better man than I. One thing I was curious about, especially since we just did this on um, Amigos, as if there was a Batman game for the Atari 1200XL. Batman came along kind of later on, you know, well into the life of the 16-bit computers in terms of the movie. There is Batman, 91, Atari Project Team. Now, you know this is a later release because it always uses that different kind of font. Like, very few actual, like, production Atari games use that font, but all of the later releases, they love it. Okay. I'll press fire to start. I'm an idiot. All right, Batman. You look pretty much like Batman. 
I mean, Batman did wear a red cape and um, some like uh, leggings. Sometimes Batman has a clone that lives on that side of the screen. And sometimes he gets trapped easily. Uh, I did not Hasifa um, because I don't have a 1.3 kickstart. Um, I was unable to really do anything. Plus, I really need to clean that keyboard. Man, it's disappointing. I wanted to... Let's try it again. Why is Batman down there? Look at the driller. Okay. Nice condom, good. The tram. <laughs> you know, I think this is probably my favorite Batman game. A, okay. Batman just leaves like little versions of himself everywhere. I have a tallow. Gotta dodge yourself as you try to escape. And no. And we've locked. <laughs> well, we have answered the question. Is there a Batman game for the Atari 1200X, or for the Atari 8-bits? Yeah. If only real Batman was like that. Curious about what's in the MISC folder. Nothing's in the MISC folder. Check out the Z games. Zaxxon, Zeppelin. Check out the Zorro game. That could be fun. Nope. Okay. Not having good luck with the Z's here. It's possible that I didn't unzip the Z's. And that's why we're getting that message. Good thinking, Curtis. Let's check it out. Especially since we're playing um, Rampage for uh, our next uh, Coco show. Oh yeah. I believe that this was one of the titles that launched with the XEGS. Yeah, we haven't um, we haven't heard from uh, Wing Chun Wolf yet. If you have a game you'd like to suggest to go with Rampage Curtis, uh, we'd welcome that, uh, and that way we can give Wing Chun some more time. Okay. Um. Okay. Well, I think we might need to select a different Rampage. There are many to choose from. Oh yeah, Cash Man. That sounds great. All right, next week's episode of The Coco Show, and by next week I mean two weeks from now, is gonna be uh, Cash Man and Rampage. Okay, so here's the second. Hmm. Yeah. This is just another example of a, a game that has been poorly dumped 
and or having a problem with the um now this could be like a cocoa type thing where maybe i need to plug the stick into the second slot it's not okay Pix, you have not thrown out a uh, a, a, uh, a request. Is there anything you'd like to see on the Atari 8-bit? Um, the 1200XL is compatible with like 98% of all uh, 800, 400, 800 software. Um, and it's definitely compatible going forward. It's only the earlier programs. And there was mostly utilities that uh, that ran into issues. Oh my gosh. Where are you, Delamort? Space Invaders. I bet there is. I bet there is. Hasifa will do Frogger, too. Um, okay, so Space Invaders is interesting. Uh, I have personal knowledge of this game. Um, so the original version of Space Invaders from 1980, um, launched on the 400-800, was programmed by a guy who wanted to make Space Invaders his own. And so what he did was he, he took Space Invaders out of space and put it on a planet, and he had the Space Invaders emerge from this um, mothership on the side. He also took out the, um, the, the uh, bunkers. So when you play this, you get no bunkers to hide behind. And remember, this was my first computer growing up. It's before the internet. Uh, this was long after Space Invaders had left the arcades. So when I first started reading about Space Invaders, and they talked about, you know, bunker strategy, I was like, what in the world are you talking about? There's no bunkers in Space Invaders. I played Space Invaders. So um, it wasn't until I played Space Invaders on my friend's uh, IBM PC, very poor port of Space Invaders, that was the first time I played with the bunkers. You've got this guy. Then the, the the mothership slowly hunkers down. The invader shapes are quite interesting. Um, I wouldn't call them bad. They're just not accurate, <laughs> you know, <laughs> to the originals. Oh yeah, if you're in Australia, man, I feel for you guys. It's it's scary. You know, one thing about living in West Virginia, there's a lot of things that are not great about the mountain state. But we have relatively few natural disasters. Yeah, basically this game becomes unplayable. Um, you know, the, the, uh, the mothership lowers down to the point where you can no longer even an expert player couldn't couldn't destroy the enemies before before they got you, and so there's no Galaga for the uh, Atari Eight Bits. There is a uh, Galaxian, but there's no Galaga. Yeah, that's true. It is a, it is an early example of level scaling, for sure. Yeah, when Ravi was showing those pictures of uh, over in uh, Nottingham, it was it was crazy. I mean, 
I don't know. I, I never really picture England as being like a flood zone. Of course, I don't really know anything about England, but it just doesn't seem like a place that would flood easily. Not like the low country in like Holland or someplace. There's all kinds of mountains and junk. So as you can see, I've, I've, I've been able to play for quite a while without losing a life. And basically what happens in this game is that the mothership descends to the point where you just physically cannot um, do anything and then it's over. Ah, come on. Which should be about right here. Not sure what happens when the mothership actually lands. Maybe you win. Maybe it's game over. Ah. So that's never, I, I guess I've never done this before. I don't remember this ever happening. Maybe I, maybe I'm awesome. I don't know guys. <laughs> I don't know what that, what that was for. I, I can tell you for certain that I've never gotten to the point where I was picked up by that ship before. That was a, a new experience. And I guess you just keep playing. Because, I mean, the, the, the guys can't get any lower. Yeah. I'm incredible. I'm the greatest game the world's ever known. <laughs> okay, so we're done with Space Invaders. But anyway, now you've seen it, Pix. You know what I'd like to play right now? If I, if I had any anything out in front of me um, and I could just pull it out of thin air, I'd fire up some Sega Bass Fishing on the Dreamcast. It's a fantastic fishing game with the real controller. Yeah, I wish I, uh, of course, I'll have the Specky out for our, our stream in the future. Um, Pix, I don't think you were here when I was talking about my plan from now on is to each week rotate in another classic computer for a stream. So this week is the 1200XL. Next week, as long as things go well with the Coco, it'll probably be the Coco. Then we'll do some Specky, then some Amstrad. And if I do um, multiple streams in a week, we'll, we'll mix it up a little bit. But I want to at least do one one stream, uh, or you know, one classic computer a week, and that will keep me rotating through my collection. All right, Frogger. So we can look at Frogger and Frogger 2. I will look. I know that uh, Hasifa wanted to see some Frogger. So we'll do this first. This is a pretty much arcade perfect rendition of Frogger. Um, of course, Frogger is, is nothing to 
you know, it, it was a, a primitive game, even for its day. But um, but there's something to be said for it, an arcade perfect rendition. At least I believe it's arcade perfect. I guess it doesn't play the. I think that the uh, the original plays Old Susanna as you play. Uh, we don't have any. Uh, that's why we've never seen. That's why you've never seen any. We do not have any STs among us. Um, STs were even less common than Amigas. Um, Aaron claims to have never seen an ST in the wild. Um, on ARG Presents, they just did a show on the Falcon, and um, that was an eye-opening experience. Another case of a you know ultra awesome powerful hardware with no developer support at all. I'm sure there are myriad clones of the uh, of Frogger on the Coco, aren't there, Curtis? Shoot, nothing I could do there. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, I know that uh, Frogger 2 3 Deep is one of the more difficult to find cartridges. Um, let's take a look at that. We've seen kind of all there is to see of Frogger um, for the Atari. That's a great question, Hasifa. Um, and it used to be it used to be an Amiga 1000. Seriously. Um, that would be the machine that I always wanted to get. You know, from doing the show for the past um, four plus years. Um, I've always been in love with the 1000. And now I've got one. So I'm going to have to come up with a new grail. Oh my gosh, look at this. So in this you're fighting the tide. I'm not sure if you want that bubble or not. I'm guessing you don't. Um, I you know I've been I, I we've been so blessed on the show. Um, I'll, I'll tell you what it actually what uh, the second place one was a four six four. You know the Amstrad CPC four six four. We've got one of those. Um, you know maybe an Acorn Archimedes. But really, it's like, what am I going to play on that that I can't play on the Amiga? Um, it's not not that exciting. Um, I would love to have a Vectrex of my. Oh no! I tell you what it is. I got I got my answer. Sam Coupe, hundred percent. That would be what I'd want. I'd want a Sam Coupe if I if I could have any any system. I'll have to check that out, Pix. We're gonna do a big Amiga 1000 stream once uh, I get it all rigged up. I've been looking at upgrade options, trying to find the, the best thing. You know, I wanna keep the original form factor as much as I can. Utilize that sidecar slot. Where's my uh, other log to go into here? Any idea what I'm supposed to be doing here, guys? Oh yeah, bark bit. You took the words right out of my mouth. Um, yeah, the bit boy. I think that's what it's called, or the hit bit, the hot bit, the hot bot. It's that rad-looking red MSX with the joystick mounted on the keyboard. That's what I want. I don't know how I'm supposed to get past this first level, guys. Is it, has anybody played Frogger 2 before? I filled up all my logs.
You know, I wouldn't mind, now that I think about it, there's all kinds of machines that I'd want. SG-1000, I'd love to have an SG-1000, although the controllers are supposedly horrible. I honestly don't know what I'm supposed to do. Has anybody ever played Frogger 2 before? Going once, going twice. All right. I guess it, it'll be it'll it'll remain a mystery how to beat Frogger Two. <clears throat> okay. What was what what was the thing that you were asking about, um, Curtis? I guess I could just scroll up in the chat there. Sea Dragon. Sea Dragon. All right. A lot of S games for the Atari. There it is. Try VC 2.1. This looks interesting. Uh, I don't think as bad as the uh, consoles did, Hasifa. Huh, <laughs> especially not, especially not the Nintendo, where everything was super. So you get points for blowing up the uh, depth charges, not just avoiding them. Okay. Okay, got it. I wasn't sure what I was supposed to be doing. There's no reverse in Submarine World. Oh boy, that's no good. Has anybody ever seen DOS boot? That's a movie that I've always wanted to see, but I've always feared because I was afraid it might be violent and scary. But I hear it's one of the greatest films of all time. Oh my gosh, how do you avoid that? Is there like a turbo speed? Because I mean, like, I can't go that fast. Got to blow these things up before they get a chance to hurt you. Oh, man. Like, once it... Yeah, I think I need to get out in front of things more. Man. It's tricky. Tricky, tricky. All right, we'll give it one more go. Sea Dragon by Russ Wetmore. Oh yeah, this is the, uh, the thing, the Johnny Tallarico thing, right, Hasifa? What's the latest news on that thing? Um, I haven't been keeping up. I, I really wish you had some kind of depth charge or something that you could drop like a bomb like in Scrambler or something. I've always been a big fan of submarines. Like Silent Service, I always like. I always love that game. I had a really cool VR submarine game that I actually played on the channel. Um, what I've told myself is that when the next version of the Quest comes out, when the Quest Two emerges, that's when I want to jump back in. Because the Quest, I, I think the Quest is the one that is gonna is gonna hook me. Because you don't have to be tethered. That is insane. I, 
I haven't tried the quest link, but the, that basically just turns... Man, you're screwed from the get-go right there. Um, the quest link just basically turns the quest into a regular rift, right? Yeah, I'd like to watch Hunt for Red October, Barkbit. Thank you for reminding me of that. That's, uh, of course, it's got submarines and Sean Connery. If you move up, will the will the the charge? See, it'll go all the way up with you. I mean, I don't know. I don't know how to avoid it there. Once it starts moving up, and you've already got momentum from moving, just seems like. Yeah, you really just gotta you gotta play warily in this game. This game has the same font as John Anderson's Rally Speedway. Mmm, barely avoided that one. Yeah, you're right, Curtis. I didn't realize that until just now. The charges move with the scrolling, but you don't have to. Oh. I forgot I had to shoot that thing. Sorry. All right. Well, guys, we've done about an hour of Atari 8-bit action. I hope you guys have enjoyed that. Um, I have heard of Sub Hunt, Hasifa. It's supposed to be great. Um, one of the best on the Intellivision. Thank you, guys, Picard, Hasifa, Curtis, Del Mort, Pix, for uh, coming out and joining me on this uh, excursion. Tune in next Saturday. Um, next Saturday, I imagine that I'll be taking some time to play uh, UFO Enemy Unknown. So perhaps we'll, uh, that will be an extra long stream on the Amiga side. Um, I don't know if we'll do a... And that's also Computer Club as uh, next Saturday. So um, check your local listings for what's going on. It's going to be a good time. Barkbit, thanks for being here. Um, Thanks for staying up late. I know for a lot of you guys over in Europe, it's it's real late. So uh, thank you. And uh, we'll see you guys on Friday for the shows. We'll be back just a normal week. Adios.